We're Rich and Kirsten. And for the last two plus months, we've been driving around Canada in our self-converted minivan camper. Up and down mountains, along some awful backcountry logging roads, and to campsites with otherworldly views. And after living in our simple minivan build, we wanted to share our guide for creating this amazing, budget-friendly minivan camper conversion to get you on the road exploring where you want to explore, all for under $500 and for any skill level. You guys probably can't see this, but it's snowing right now. We've developed some blueprints for this guide, which you can find in the video description below, and you can do it with virtually no tools, as long as you can convince your friendly hardware store representative to cut the plywood for you with the cut sheet that we've provided in the description for this video. The only thing that you're gonna have to do is drill some pilot holes and actually put screws into plywood to assemble this build. This guide is compatible with all Grand Caravans, Town and Countries, and Volkswagen Rutans because, well, they're made by Chrysler and they're all the same shape of vehicle. The only thing that you're gonna have to do is cut the vertical support beams so that you can actually level out your floor and we've given you the dimensions that we use to level our floor out to perfection. We also believe that this guide could be used as a starting point so that you can adjust this for your minivan build if you have a different make or model. Over the last two months we've become experts on this build or at least we'd like to think so because this is our original build that we hadn't seen anywhere else. These are the main considerations that we made when we were building out our van that you may want to as well. When we were making our build, we knew that sleeping two people in one minivan would present some interesting challenges and it certainly did, but we prioritize a full length bed because we all know what happens if you don't get a restful night of sleep, especially when you're in such close quarters with another person. And it was almost a full size double. It was the same length, but unfortunately the constraints of the vehicle made sure that we could only have a 48 inch wide bed. We made do with the constraints of having two people in the van and it made all the other pain points worth it moving around storage potentially, or having to build the bed every day, it was all worth it to make sure that we had a comfortable night's sleep and enough room to store all of our gear. And if we were building our van out again, we would 100% prioritize having this full length bed because it made sleeping in this van incredible. And I can honestly say I slept as well in this van as I ever have in any bed in any home ever. I might have even slept better. <laughs> Having two people in a van and having the majority of our living space be dedicated to sleeping meant that we weren't able to cook inside the van, at least not easily. And that was something that we were okay with because we were mainly traveling during the summer and early fall. Obviously if we were traveling in the snow, we might have a different opinion on this, but we were subject to the elements when we were cooking. Well, this is certainly one of the most memorable ways that I've ever made coffee <laughs> out the back of our minivan with the tailgate up and our stove almost on the ground. <laughs> and that was okay with us. It gave us more time to appreciate the outdoors and it also was better for exhausting our cooking fumes. If you do choose to cook inside your van, you do need an exhaust fan or an ability to crack open the windows to let the propane fumes out so that you don't have moisture buildup, but so that you also don't have carbon monoxide buildup. We could cook out the back of our van so we could lift up the tail hitch and put our stove on the tow kick or on one of the boxes to be able to cook under the shelter of the van. Luckily, it was good enough that we could always find a place to cook that was outside of the van. One of the major benefits of sleeping in a minivan is the fact that when you get to a campsite, you don't have to set up and tear down a tent every single night. We saw tons of people on the road that must have wasted big chunks of their day simply setting up and tearing down their campgrounds where our entire campsite was enclosed inside of a minivan. And in situations where it was raining like crazy, we were even able to set up our bed inside of the van with some creative maneuvering around the vehicle. AKA we played Twister. <laughs> One of the main reasons that we picked the Volkswagen Rutan was that it didn't have the second row stow and go seats, which meant that we could physically remove those seats without too many issues because they're designed to be removed and use the underbin storage for all of our dirty, messy hiking gear, which we did not want in the van itself. This build is also perfect for the weekend warrior type. And in that situation, I don't think you need to remove the rear stow and go seats because you will have enough storage for a few days. But if you're planning on living in it for months 
months on end like we were, we recommend that you do take out the rear seat. For us, our water jug was probably the main determinant on why we decided to remove the rear seats. It didn't fit under the platform perfectly, which means we would have constantly been maneuvering it in between the front seats and the back seats, which just didn't seem practical to us. Plus, we like to eat well, and when you like to eat well, there's a lot of food that has to be stored, and there's a lot of cooking supplies that also need to be stored. The other main thing that we were looking for in this build is removing movability because we wanted to ensure that we could bring the vehicle back to its stock configuration for whatever reason it may be, whether we decided to sell the van or whether we wanted to use it as a commuter vehicle. And this build is perfect for that. Because we've used screws, we're able to simply break it down into the plywood parts and build it back up again without any issues. The build is incredibly sturdy. We never actually felt or heard any squeaking from this build. And we had to hit the brakes really hard a few times and it never slid forward or backwards. So let's get to the nitty gritty. How much did this cost us? I know you're all wondering. So down in the description below, we put exactly how much this cost us for each part of this build. We got started for less than $500 Canadian. We'll put the US conversion here for you. This is a relatively low cost way that you can get yourself on the road that doesn't require you ripping out any part of your van and you can do it all in just one day. Just like that. Obviously this doesn't include the cost of tools. We are making the assumption that you have these tools at your disposal, but maybe you can borrow from a friend or a friendly neighbor. In our build, we use three quarter inch plywood, but we do believe that you could use half inch plywood without any issues and it would still be incredibly sturdy. We've also included the types of building materials that we've used. For example, we use maple plywood. However, if you do choose to use a different type, maybe you'll save some money that way. Or if you go with something a little bit more expensive like Baltic birch, which is what we would recommend, that will cost you just a touch more money than what we ended up spending. But it's completely up to you and like we said, do this your own way. After a long hot summer here in Canada, the weather is really cooling down and you're gonna wanna make sure in your build that you protect yourself from the elements as much as possible and also get a little bit of privacy by adding some form of window covers. In our build, we did a combination of Reflectix in the rear windows and curtains for the sliding doors and the partition. If you wanna see more about exactly how we made these window covers, check out our first two videos from the build series where we go more in depth about that. But in hindsight, I would not cover the Reflectix with black fabric. While it did give us a little bit more stealth, we found that over time the Reflectix degraded and didn't really fit properly in the windows. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in supporting us, check us out on Patreon. We really appreciate all of our Patreons, so thank you to everybody who's joined up so far. And we really hope this guide can help you get on the road in your minivan, exploring where you want to explore. If you like this video, we'd love it if you would give us a thumbs up or leave a comment down below with how you put your own spin on this build, or if you have any questions questions about our build that we didn't answer for you. We are working on a special project which you're gonna see in the next video and we are so excited to get to that. But until then, thanks again for watching and we will see you in a few days in the next video with our new project. Bye!